tender meat, fluffy rice, and an aroma so rich, people literally dream of it. That's why I spent the last weeks researching and testing dozens of recipes to come up with this hopefully ultimate beginner's guide to making chicken biryani. We'll talk about the rice, we'll make crispy fried onions, we'll even make our own masala, marinate our chicken to tender perfection, and I will even show you my favorite step, which is how to smoke your entire biryani for a truly unforgettable flavor. But before we jump right into cooking, let's do a quick 60 second history of biryani. Start the clock now. What we know as biryani today originated hundreds of years ago from Persia and Northern India, specifically inspired by the Mughal Empire. The Mughals, who were descendants of nomadic tribes, invaded India but didn't really like their food. So they brought in more familiar Persian cooks to cater to their taste. These cooks highly valued rice and also loved marinating meat in yogurt, which is a very powerful tenderizer. Meanwhile, the local people of Northern India were really into intense spice blends, often sourced from the country's south. Over time, the Mughal chefs incorporated more and more of those spice blends into their beloved rice and meat dishes, and it didn't take long for the creation of biryani. Pretty sure that was under 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that we're educated, let's go and cook this thing. Like many good things, a good biryani starts with the right rice. You want to try to find high quality, super long grain aged basmati rice. This is the type that will give you the super fluffy grain by grain result you're looking for with biryani. But the right process matters just as much. It is absolutely essential that you soak your rice before you cook with it. Wash your rice thoroughly until the water is no longer super cloudy. Place it in a bowl and cover generously with room temperature water. Soak for at least 30 minutes, ideally one to one and a half hours. But since get a whole biryani to make that waiting will take care of itself. Let's leave our rice alone for now. One of the hallmarks of biryani are fried onions. Even the name biryani originally meant something like fried and probably referred to this key ingredient. And to make them, you're gonna need around five to six onions, a bunch of cooking oil, and a little patience. Let me show you how. Begin by trimming the top and bottom of the onions. Then cut them vertically from top to bottom. Peel off the outermost layer along with the dry skin for easy peeling. Then horizontally slice each onion half uniformly into thin half rings, aiming for a consistently even thickness of one to two millimeters. You can do this with a knife, but this is a great time to use a mandolin slicer if you have one. Gently separate the cut onions to make sure the half rings don't stick together. Holy shit. Get a heavy pot or a wok like this. Add around half a liter of cold oil. Now get your onions into the cold oil, ensuring they're all evenly coated. They don't have to be fully submerged, but almost as good. Set the stove to medium high heat. Stirring frequently, fry the onions until they take on a hint of golden brown, typically within 10 to 20 minutes. Depending on your kitchen, this can also take a little longer. Just stay patient, mine took around 28 minutes to get to this point. Reduce the heat to low and continue frying until the onions achieve a light golden hue, roughly three to five minutes. Don't let them turn deep golden as they'll darken further after being removed from the oil. Now kill the heat. Using a spider strainer, scoop as many onions as possible, lifting them out of the oil. Gently press out using a slotted spoon. It's okay if the onions clump slightly. Transfer them to a tray lined with paper towels. Repeat the step for any remaining onions. With the aid of two forks, delicately separate the fried onions, spreading them across the paper towel. Once your wok has cooled, strain and set aside the flavorful onion oil. These crispy fried onions are a fantastic garnish or addition to so many meals. They'll keep in an airtight container for a couple of days, but today we're gonna need all of these to make our biryani absolutely amazing. But it gets better, guys. This oil that we fried our onions in is now fully infused with that delicious aroma. This will keep in a jar or glass bottle for many, many weeks. We're gonna use some of it for the biryani, but a lot of it will be left over, and I highly recommend you try cooking some more dishes with this. It's gonna be a real game changer. If the flavor of our biryani was a band, the seasoning mix or masala would be its spotlight hungry lead singer. You can buy pre-made biryani masalas from any well-stocked Indian or Asian grocery stores and they're usually quite decent. But if you're willing to stock up on a few spices and make your biryani masala at home from scratch, it's gonna have the single biggest impact on your biryani game, taking it from good to great. First, you're gonna need a heavy skillet like this. And now to this cold skillet, you're gonna add coriander seeds, whole cumin, then we got Shah Jira, which is sometimes translated to as caraway, but it really is not. If you can't find it, use more cumin instead. 
fennel seeds, whole fenugreek seeds, then we got cardamom, around 15 pieces of green and 5 pieces of black. One stick of cinnamon, let's break that up lightly. Good old black peppercorns. Then we got bits of dried chili, I used 2 tablespoons worth, you can just use 5 whole ones. Then we got around 8 bay leaves and please do yourself the favor and get them from an Indian grocery store or an Asian one, they are quite different from the western ones. Then we got cloves. This seems like an ungodly amount, but trust me, somehow this works. Next we got mace, one of my favorites, and it's actually the flower of a nutmeg plant. Toast all of your whole spices on medium heat until aromatic and warm, then transfer to a bowl to cool. Once cooled, transfer all of your spices to a spice grinder or food processor, then add your powdered ingredients, which are nutmeg, turmeric and a little bit of salt. Grind well until fine, but not completely pulverized. A few coarse chunks can definitely remain. I like to give them a quick shake around the halfway point so the spices are more evenly dispersed. I promise this masala tastes a million times better and fresher than anything you can get store-bought. I don't even think I'd have to do a lot of convincing if you could actually just smell this, because this is ridiculous. This is a little bit more than we'll need, so you can easily make two, maybe three or four biryanis out of this. Keep it in an airtight container after using. Do make a new one after a couple of months, because this stuff does go stale after a while. Now it's time to get all of that delicious flavor into our hero ingredients, which is chicken and potatoes by marinating them. And yes, I said potatoes. I mean, theoretically, these are optional, but they're not just traditional, they're also highly recommended. As you cook your biryani, they're gonna absorb a ton of that delicious flavor and turn into literal creamy biryani masala flavor bombs. By the way, my recipe calls for minced ginger and garlic, but I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying one of these pre-made minced ginger garlic pastes at the Asian grocery store, they're a major time saver. When it comes to the chicken, I really like going for drumsticks. They're a great size, they require minimal prep, and they're very easy to eat. Chicken thighs would also work. Just do me the favor and use a bone-in cut of chicken because that's a whole lot of extra flavor right there. There's just one little catch, which is that I like to remove the skin of the chicken. First of all, I don't love its texture in a biryani when it's not crispy. And secondly, and more importantly, I think it's much easier for the marinade to penetrate into the chicken once we get rid of the skin. To remove the skin, peel it down and pull it off the chicken drumstick at the joint. If it doesn't come off easily, use a knife to cut off any excess. Discard or keep the chicken skin in the freezer for future cooking projects. Next, you want to peel your potatoes and then cut each one into roughly six large chunks. Transfer the chicken and potatoes to a large bowl. Generously season with salt, then add yogurt, lemon juice, ginger garlic paste, thinly sliced green chili, of course, some of our biryani masala, and Kashmiri chili powder. Now add around one third of our crispy fried onions to the mix, as well as a few tablespoons of our super fragrant onion oil. Finally, just a sprinkle of freshly chopped cilantro and freshly chopped mint. Mix well until fully combined. By the way, I just chopped up a whole big bunch of fresh cilantro and mint. We only used a handful just now, but we're gonna use a whole lot more in a little bit, so keep that in mind and work ahead. Now in a perfect world, you'd do all of this marinating ahead of time, so your chicken and potatoes have around four to six hours to absorb all of these flavors in the fridge, but if you don't have that much time, that's also completely fine. Just let them hang out like this for a little bit while we prep our rice, and I promise our biryani will still be amazing. Biryani rice is not just your plain old rice. I mean, yes, we've already picked the right variety and we've soaked it for well over an hour at this point, but because biryani is bursting with flavor all around, this rice shall not remain unseasoned. To begin, set water to boil in a stock pot. Then add bay leaves, a cinnamon stick, shajira seeds, green cardamom, cloves, star anise, black peppercorns, and a green chili slid open. Squeeze the juice of half a lemon into the pot and also add the lemon rind to the water. Now season the water with a generous amount of salt, similar to the salinity of pasta water. Add your soaked and drained rice to the boiling water. Now cook the rice until it is roughly 90% done with a slightly grainy al dente bite in the center, which is actually quite fast. It should take around three to five minutes. Drain the rice and spread it on a tray to allow it to steam 
steam off. With all the added spices, this rice is so incredibly fragrant. And may I suggest, if you ever make any type of Indian food, make this rice. Just cook it two minutes longer until it's fully cooked and enjoy. Now, if you wanna make your biryani the old school way, you can just keep all the whole spices in, which I'm gonna do. But if you mind them, don't worry. Now is a good time to take all the big chunky ones out or just put them in a spice bag to begin with. Friends, we're finally close to the grand finale. Our chicken and potatoes have marinated, our rice is pre-cooked, and now all we need to do is bring everything together. First, place a heavy pot over high heat and add two tablespoons of our onion oil. Once the oil is hot and shimmering, add the marinated chicken and potato mix. Cook, stirring occasionally for five to six minutes. Lower the heat, cover tightly with the lid, and cook until the chicken is almost done, about 10 to 12 minutes. Ideally, you should see the oil and chicken fat separate from the grain. Meanwhile, make a saffron infused milk, gently heat a small bowl with milk in the microwave until just steaming. Alternatively, you can do this in a small saucepan over medium heat. Add the saffron to the warm milk and let it bloom. Set aside for now. Our chicken has been cooking for about 10 minutes and now is a perfect time to taste and season our gravy. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a light taste. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Your gravy should definitely be on the saltier and spicier side now. Mine is certainly spicy enough. Maybe it needs a little salt. There we go, just a little more. Also, if you're worried your gravy might be looking a little bit too dry, you can add just a little bit of extra water. Half a cup or something should do the trick. Now, let's start layering. First, distribute the chicken and potatoes in one even layer. Sprinkle with biryani masala, then top with one third of the remaining mint, cilantro, and fried onions. With a clean slotted spoon, spread the pre-cooked rice in an even layer on top of the chicken and potatoes. Sprinkle with saffron infused milk and place a few knobs of butter on top. Top with about one third of the mint, cilantro and fried onions. Now cover the pot with a well-fitting lid and place an upside down heavy pot on top. Cook on medium high for five minutes. Then turn the flame to low and cook for 15 more minutes. Traditionally, you'd use a method here called doom cooking, where you seal the biryani pot with a piece of dough, a piece of clay, or even just the wet kitchen towel. I think the purpose is to trap in all that moisture, steam, and aroma, but honestly, if you place something super heavy right on top, I think it's gonna do the trick just fine. Once time is up, you wanna remove your biryani from the heat and rest it for at least 10 minutes before serving. Very hard to resist, I know. By the way, I know this is not exactly an easy recipe. And if you're anything like me, sometimes you prefer a written version to a video because videos can be difficult to follow along. You can find the full detailed written recipe on my new website, kitchenpassport.club, which of course I'm gonna link right below in the video description. The recipe on the website is 100% free, but if you wanna support the channel, there is now also a super neat printable version that you can buy that has extra details, a shopping list, and much more. And if you happen to be a Patreon supporter, you're getting that printable version anyway. But for now, while our biryani is still resting, there's one final element we gotta take care of, and it's a good one. We're finally ready to serve, or let's say we're getting closer. Carefully transfer the contents of your pot to a large platter. This biryani is already spectacular. I could easily garnish this up and dig right in, but there's one final step that is absolutely going to take your biryani to the ultimate level, and that is smoking your biryani. And this is not as hard as it sounds. All you're gonna need for that is a little bowl with ghee, which we're about to melt in the microwave, and a little piece of charcoal. Place the ghee in the middle of our serving platter. Then you wanna light that charcoal with a torch until it's glowing and hot. Finally, we drop the charcoal into the melted ghee. It's gonna start smoking immediately, so you wanna be fast and cover it with an upside down bowl to trap all the tasty smoke. Now we wanna let this sit three to five minutes in which the biryani is gonna absorb really a surprising amount of smoke. And I gotta tell you, I absolutely love this step. A lot of people do this to the meat while it's marinating, but I think it's much, much nicer to do it right at the end because this way your biryani really maintains all that smoke instead of it cooking out again. One. Whoa. 
Garnish with the remaining fresh mint, fresh cilantro, and crispy fried onions. This has been a piece of work. We've been here since 10 in the morning and it is now almost 7 p.m. I mean, everything takes longer on camera, but I am hungry. And there's nothing more I wanna eat right now than this chicken biryani. Don't forget the full recipe for this is on my website and you can find the link in the description below, but now I'm just, I'm just done talking, I wanna eat. I think I wanna eat this with my hands actually, because obviously in India, a lot of times food is eaten with your hands and I love that. So let's go and dig right in. Mm. Oh my God. Whole spices in the rice, great for flavor, a little annoying to eat. The rice is cooked to perfection. I'm gonna try a chicken drumstick. Mm. Oh my God. The meat is tender. It's incredibly well seasoned. This is a last meal contender for sure. There's a very good reason so many people call chicken biryani their favorite dish. I'm gonna try the potato now. The creamy texture of the potato after it sucks up all the flavor, that's where it's at. Mm. Originally, I was supposed to make a raita, which is like a yogurt dip with this. For today's video, I forgot to buy the ingredients, so I didn't, but I'm missing it. Like this with a yogurt sauce would be, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna eat all of this chicken biryani right now.